Hello friends, today is Friday, July 5th, and as I'm sure you know by now, uh, we lost our friend Danny Shore this past Monday. And I wanted to make a video, um, sort of a tribute to Danny. I uh, haven't done this sooner because, well, it's been difficult, and this is not an easy video for me to make. Um, yeah, he passed away on Monday. I was actually really busy on Monday, and I did not look at any email, social media, and nothing. And then on Tuesday morning, I, I started seeing things that, you know, uh, started seeing videos, people uh, smoking a pipe for Danny, and I went to Sue's channel because uh, Sue Dunhill's been very good about keeping us up to date on everything. And uh, I saw her video, and I realized that. Uh, Danny had passed away. So I said, well, I better make a video, and I, I couldn't. I, you know, I really couldn't. It, it was really hard. And uh, it's taken me until today to believe that I can actually do justice to this, you know, to, to, to do justice to uh, his memory. I want to offer sincere thanks to, to Sue Dunhill because Sue has been just a rock through all of this. Uh, she's kept us informed. She's been a bridge between us and Danny at times when he couldn't speak to us. Uh, she's spoken for him and she's helped us speak to him and, and hopefully helped us bring a little light into, into his, his last, uh, last few months there. Um, and I, I really appreciate everything you've done, Sue, so thank you for that. And I also want to thank, uh, I believe it was, it was Harriet that started this uh, Pipe for Danny project, which I, I think is a wonderful thing, and it certainly will be a, a fine tribute to him. I've really enjoyed watching a lot of the videos. It's been hard to watch them, to be honest, but, uh, you know, just hearing other people talk about him and, and, and celebrate uh, our friend. So, thank you for that, Harriet. So, <clears throat> we've, we've heard a lot of People talk about it, how generous Danny was, and he, he was, beyond a doubt, one of the most generous people I, I've known, certainly in the YTPC, but uh, in, in life, really. Um, and I first experienced that generosity uh, a few years ago. Uh, our, another friend of ours, Arts and Cloud, had come across a, um, a tub of sugar barrel. And I commented that, you know, I used to smoke Sugar Barrel. I really loved it. I wasn't really looking to get any. I just let him know that I, that I enjoyed it. And he sent me a small, a, well, a generous sample. But, um, I, you know, it was, it was a little baggy. And I quite enjoyed it. And I did a video review of uh, her impressions of Sugar Barrel and talked about how I smoked it in the past. A few days later, I got an email from Danny. Just, hey, how you doing? Uh, send me your address. And I didn't connect the two things. I knew Danny was going to send something, and I thought it was going to be, you know, a tin of tobacco or a tamper or something like that, and I'd send something back to him. And I got this big box in the mail a few days later, and in the box was an entire unopened tub of sugar barrel. And he said, you know, I just, when I heard you liked it, I, I thought you might want some more. And I was, you know, blown away by that. And I actually have some of that sugar barrel here that I'm going to be uh, smoking as, as the video goes on. Another time, and I could I could spend an hour telling generous Danny stories, but the the other one that is really important to me was uh, you know back before I started my my pipe restoration business, I was making these videos just teaching folks how to restore pipes, and as I'll talk about in a few minutes, Danny was was doing much the same before I was, and he was a big inspiration to me. So I was working on a pipe. Um, it was uh, Mr. Roberts' pipe, a little billiard. Mr. Roberts is extremely obscure. It's the only pipe I've ever found labeled Mr. Roberts, and I've never been able to find any other information on that. Danny contacted me when the videos were done and said, um, I'd really like to have a Mr. Roberts pipe in my collection. Can I buy that? And you know, I said, sure. And, yeah, as we went back and forth on the details of the transaction and everything, he, 
he let slip that he, he didn't want a Mr. Roberts pipe. Nobody had heard of a Mr. Roberts pipe. <laughs> what, what he said to me, and it, it means so much to me, was that he wanted to have a pipe that I worked on in his collection. And that's just incredibly meaningful to me. And it was, it was a huge boost to my, just, just to my, my sense of, of the work that I was doing. It, it made me feel really good about what I was doing. And uh, Danny did get that pipe, and he was very proud to have it in his collection. And then in recent times when Danny was selling off his pipe collection, um, I saw that the Mr. Roberts was one of the pipes in the, uh, the sale, and I bought it because I, I, I just couldn't let this go to anyone else. Uh, so this is the Mr. Roberts pipe that I restored, that Danny owned, and never smoked because Danny did not smoke the pipes in his collection, uh, at least not many. Well, he had a lot of pipes that he smoked, but he had a lot of pipes that he did not. And this is, you know, still in the condition that it was the day I sent it to him. Uh, I am now proud to have this in my collection, not because I worked on it or it's a Mr. Roberts, but because Danny owned it. And uh, it, was, it was a connection we had. So this will go in my collection unsmoked and uh, stay that way. But I'm, I'm very glad that it's, uh, it's here with me today. I bought a lot of Danny's pipes. Uh, I probably... I never counted them, but I've got two boxes, probably 20, 30 pipes. And I only smoked one of them, and that's this guy here that you've seen me smoke. It's just a unnamed, custom-built, knockoff sort of pipe that I I took out of the, the, the boxes because I wanted to smoke one of them. You know, I wanted to have one that I could think about him with and, and enjoy. And uh, this just spoke to me when I when I was looking through them, and I've been certainly enjoying this pipe ever since. The rest of them I put away. And the reason I put them away, and you're, you're going to think me foolish on this, you know, a lot of people have said, well, we, you know, we, we knew this was coming. Um, I didn't think that way. You know, I, I honestly believed that someday Danny was going to come back and start making videos again. I know it was foolish, I, I know that it was wishful thinking, but with cancer it's so important to keep positive and to believe that you will beat it. So I was not willing to give up before Danny gave up. And I thought that someday, because I knew his collection was important to him, I could give those pipes back to him. So you can call me a fool for that, but I now have a couple of boxes of unsmoked pipes that I can begin to insert into my own collection and think fondly of Danny when I do so. And the first one that I'll be uh, doing that with is right here. This is a Bari, uh, Bari Deluxe uh, 752, if I can see the number right. And it's a uh, made in Denmark, very well respected pipe company. Uh, and this pipe is absolutely unsmoked. It's got a bulk coating on it. Um, I ran a pipe cleaner through it. it. It's just clean wood in there. It's never been smoked. And today I'm going to smoke this and I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to put some of the sugar barrel that Danny gave to me in the pipe and smoke it in his honor. So Danny was a generous man. There's no question about that. There's another thing that I think we'd all agree with, uh, at least anyone that's watched a significant number of Danny's videos. Danny was a fascinating guy. You know, he was, and his videos were just, I, I looked forward to them. Every time I saw a video from Danny in my feed, I got excited because you never knew what you were going to get. You know, it, it might be, it might just be Danny sitting there talking to you about something smoking a pipe. He might be showing you his pipe collection, showing you his tobacco cellar. He might be taking you for a walk. He might be going bottle collecting. You might be going fishing. You might be at a bus stop waiting for a bus. I mean, it's just, it could be anything. And you might be in his shop restoring pipes with him. And man, could Danny restore pipes. He'd have 10 or 12 pipes going at the same time. I have no idea how he did it. I would go crazy trying to, you know, I work on one at a time. I, I, sometimes if I have a, a group of you know, four pipes from one person, I'll start them all together, so I'll do all the stems, but they have to be lined up and carefully segregated. Danny would just be, they'd, they'd be everywhere, and they were so beautiful when he was done. 
And the other thing that really struck me about him, and this was important for me, so I, I've been restoring pipes for a long time, you know, before I was ever on YouTube. And my approach Good, thank you, Danny. My approach, um, as anyone who's watched my videos will attest to, tends to be very technical, very pragmatic. And I use the methods that I use because I believe they're the best methods. Danny was all over the place. You know, he'd, he'd be trying anything, and, and he was... I, I don't think he'd mind if I said that his, his methods were a bit more, um, I don't, I hate to say amateurish because that's not really what I mean, but it's the only word that's coming to mind. You know, he'd do things like, uh, I don't know if he ever actually did this, but you know, put toothpaste on a stem. I've seen people do that and polish the stem with toothpaste, um, or, or, you know, something like that. And, and I would watch this and I learned so much from it. Not that I took those exact methods, but they they really influenced me because it, it helped me be looser in my thinking about pipes. And I, I learned a lot from Danny. I learned a lot about pipe repair and restoration from Danny. He would he would make these Frankenstein pipes where he'd have a bowl and a, and a stem, and if they didn't exactly fit, he'd make an adapter for the two of them. And you'd, you'd watch it and you'd think, how's that going to And it would work. And it, He'd be smoking it in the next video. It, it was just wonderful to watch. And the other thing that, that I learned that really is important, and I, I think about it all the time, is that he just put himself out there. You know, he, he was unfiltered. And you got the real Danny, always. And that, to me, was that was difficult for me in the beginning. You know, I, I scripted a lot. I, I thought a lot about what I was going to say. And he taught me that you don't... You shouldn't do that. You know, it's better to be real. And nobody was realer than Danny Shore. So Danny was a fascinating man of many interests. And, oh, he made some videos. <laughs> Finally... Danny was a good man, and I'm going to tell a story now that uh, I've never told, and Danny never told, but uh, I think it speaks to just how good a guy he was. So soon after I launched my online business, repairing and restoring pipes, Danny got in touch with me. And he said, I have a pipe that I'd like you to work on. It needs a stem. And I said, sure. And he was very insistent. He said, I'm going to pay. I want to pay full price. I said, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll you know, do my best and try to, try to make you happy. So the pipe came in. And it was um, this little... Um, William DeMuth, I think, was the company. WD, I'm blanking on it. It's a triangle with WDC, I think, William DeMuth Company. Uh, they, they're, these are not rare pipes, but they're they're interesting. Um, this was in really nice condition. The stamping was, was pristine on it. And it was one of these pipes that had a cap. In this case, it was a gold cap around the, the rim. And then the cap extended down, and it was like cut into a lacework pattern all the way around the bowl. Very pretty little pipe. And it had the tenon stuck in the shank. And the tenon appeared to be uh, horn or bone. I, I, I don't know which. And he wanted me to extract the tenon because uh, he was unable to get it out and make a new stem for it. So I thought, okay, I'll, I'll do that. And, you know, I was a bit surprised because I've seen Danny be so innovative with uh, his approach to things. I'm sure he would have been able to get this thing out. And, uh, you know, he's, he's made stems, he's, he had the ability to, to, to do this pipe himself. So I was surprised that he asked me to do it. So, 
I spent a couple days trying to get that tenon out. Uh, normally what I'll do is I'll put a screw into the uh, airway and, and get it in there tight and then pull and if it doesn't immediately move then I put the pipe in a freezer, put it in a plastic Ziploc bag, put it in the freezer for about 20 minutes and that will cause just because of thermal contraction and expansion I guess it'll cause it to contract and then when you take it out it warms up and it expands and it breaks the seal between the tenon and the, the briar and usually then you can pull it out quite easily well that didn't work so I, I decided to do repeated cycles of that and I probably did it about ten times in and out of the freezer and it still wasn't working and I thought okay this thing's really stuck so I put the screw into a vise and I stood opposite it and I, I pulled and it started to give a little bit and then what happened was the worst thing that's ever happened to me in pipe restoration the shank of this pipe just exploded uh, I mean it was splinters there was there was nothing uh, left of the shank and when I looked at the, the, the piece that was on the screw the, the tenon I realized, and I had never thought to even consider this, that it was a threaded tenon. It was actually a horn or bone threaded tenon that screwed into the briar, which is why it wouldn't come out. And anyway, I uh, was terribly embarrassed by this. I was, you know, really upset that I had a customer's pipe that was just destroyed. I mean, if they, you know, a tenon will crack now and then, and I. I warn people about that, but I can fix that. This I couldn't fix. So I was really worried. I, I got in touch with Danny and I explained what happened. And, you know, I told him I'd pay for it or find him another pipe, similar pipe, or, you know, do whatever I could. And he responded, I don't worry about it. I, I didn't really want the pipe. I just wanted to give you some business. And I was just shocked because. You know, here I was expecting difficulty, <laughs> but I shouldn't have. Danny wasn't the kind of guy that would give you difficulty. But he honestly just wanted to give me some business. That's that's all it was, and he he never mentioned it again. Never, never mentioned it. So he was a good man, and I really am thankful for the time that we got to share with him. Uh, both in his videos and, and in the personal interactions that I had with him. I will miss him dearly, and I'm sure many of you will feel the same way. I don't really have the words to, to finish this video, to be honest. Um, I just want to say that he'll, his memory will stay with us, and uh, we'll keep him in our hearts. So, thank you, and, and, and God bless you all. Take care.